Sí. Uh. Welcome everybody back to this our Clawhammer um, banjo workshop series with Michael Miles. Hey Michael, how you doing? I'm good, David. Good to see you again. Yeah, good to be here. Um, this is going to be a fun one. We're, today we're going to be talking about 37 ways to make G, C, and D chords. Um, I, it, I'm going to hold you to that. Exactly 37 ways to make each of these. <laughs> I think we're going to exceed 37. So, so we'll All but right. we'll get there. All right, <laughs> sounds good. <laughs> Well, well, um, right at the top, why don't we, why don't we just ex really quickly go through so everybody's on the same page. How do you build, when we're, we're talking about chords right now, G, C, and D chords, these are triads, meaning there's three notes make up the chords. So how do you build one of these chords? What would be in like a G chord? Well, that's where the, the banjo is friendly. We're, so we're in G tuning and uh, there are all the strings, there are all the notes, and the notes are uh, go, going across from the fifth string down is uh, the, the fifth string is G, then D is the fourth string, G again at the third string, B is the second string, and D is the first. And so we only need three of those notes to make a G chord, technically. It's G, B, and D. They're the first, third, and the fifth of the G scale. And you can, you can whether you read music or you don't have to read music at all, the musical alphabet goes up A to G, and you could just go, it's the first, third, and fifth, and it could go, it's G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G again. So G is the first one, A, B is the third one, C, D is the fifth. So the first, third, and the fifth, G, B, and D, that makes a G chord. And there they are, G, B, and D. And so, uh, when what's what's great about the banjo and this open and the open tunings is that we can have all kinds of different ways to voice that G chord. Thanks, you. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Um, and you have a way of looking at the banjo neck because, um, as a constellation, is the way you described it. So you can build these chords all the way up. Then you know, build just any one of these chords, a G, a C, or a D chord, or any chord, all the way up the neck very easily. Uh, do you want to kind of get into that a little bit? Yeah, so so as a as a player, when when um, when people start playing the banjo, and we're gonna let's we're just gonna play a song, let's say we're gonna play um, uh, the uh, what is that? Going down the road feeling bad or something. And you could just start um, strumming the open strings going down that road feeling bad and i'm just playing just playing those open strings well what's what's and that works okay but what we have are all these great options to to create interesting grooves to make that song and every other song like it um interesting and so i uh, that's where i like to like l be able to look at the neck of the banjo and th and and th know a few chords and then know where know where the sounds are and so so g we've got the open strings and then there's this chord the full g chord at the at the third fourth and fifth frets and so i like to think of all of those notes because if if i play them if i can fret them and it's a g chord but I can also, when the, when the banjo is open, it's still a G chord. So that means that any combination of open strings and these fretted notes is going to still be a G chord. It might, uh, and we've got, we usually have extra notes to spare, like this, um, when you strum the G like open strings, there's two G's and there's two D's. Technically, you don't need you only need one of those to make it a chord. But oftentimes, the song will you know, you'll you'll feel the chord whether you have a complete triad in it or not. And so, and I'll show you how how we can use that. So that's one to the constellation. There's this constellation, and then going up to the seventh fret, here's another one, and it's a seventh fret on the third string. The eighth fret on the second string and the ninth fret on the first string 
I like to think of that as another as another part of the constellation. Technically, you could have the ninth fret on the fourth string, but uh, for practical purposes, this 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 is gonna this will do because that those are the notes that are gonna sound good. Um, and then finally, we have if you go to the twelfth fret, it repeats the open string. So here's the twelfth fret, and I can play those. So I've got those 12, 12 fret of strings one, two, and three, then that location seven, eight, and nine on the on the um, third, second, and first string. And then this G chord for uh, for any and any combination. So now instead of going and playing, here's my um, Oh, I was going to play rolling in my sweet baby's arms. Um, I ain't going to work on the railroad. Ain't going to work on the farm. So here's that same way that open string groove. But check this out. I could go up. I'm just going to take the fifth fret of the first string and pull it off for a little bit. I ain't going to work on the railroad. It's all still it's all still G or I could take a lower you know this lower the fifth fret on the fourth string and hammer it on I ain't gonna work on the railroad and and what you can what you can then do by looking at the constellation and, and just using the fundamental techniques of hammer-ons pull-offs and slides to make it interesting so here's a hammer on to the fifth fret and then i'm gonna pull off from the third string fourth fret so hammer on pull off and the, and i know these notes are going to work because they're part of this g chord and i'm pulling a hammer and i'm pulling off to open strings so I ain't gonna work on the railroad. I ain't gonna work on the farm. You know, so then it's gonna go to another chord. And what's so what's so great about the G tuning is now you can take that those same ideas right up here to the go to our next spot. So the seven, eight, and nine. I'm gonna. I ain't going to work on the railroad. I ain't going to work on the farm. And so, and, 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 and so, same way, pull off, hammer on, whatever you slide into it. It's, and, and you get this, uh, you get this groove that's completely different from that one down there or, or a, a higher register and then up to the 12th fret another another set of sounds and what's kind of fun at the 12th fret is that uh you you probably have when you uh, we all start we all started with cripple creek you know uh and and discovered wow it sounds really cool when you pull off from the fifth fret or you do anything with the fifth fret well now here's uh here's the advanced version of that you're up here at the 12th fret uh and try pulling off from 17. 17 is the equivalent of the fifth fret so so now i'm at, there's my little little bar chord at the 12th fret and you don't have to i don't have to hold them all down i could hold one of them down or two of them down or uh and then i ain't gonna work on the railroad and, uh, and you get this other other cool sound. And if you're playing with guitar players, you know, your banjo is just going to sing out over all of them. What's a good way to practice these? Uh, it's a little bit different topic, but you're doing a lot of these pull offs and hammer ons here. What's a good way to practice those so they're in time? Because I see a lot of students doing hammer ons and pull offs kind of at random rhythmic mm -hmm. times. Is there a way to kind of lock that in? I, th I think so. I think um, a, a way to uh, a way to do it if if, if you think of um, almost like a measure of two four time, where you're gonna pull off or do a hammer on 
and follow it with a brush thumb. So in, in almost all of those cases, that's what I was doing where it's uh, uh, there at the 17th fret, what I was, you know, I'll pull off it from 17 and then brush thumb. And, and you're just doing a little tiny brush. It's like a brush of two strings. Only. Yeah, you don't. You don't need. A, it could be one string. Yeah. You don't. It doesn't have to be big, but it's um, uh, it's that, um, you know, one and two and one and two yeah. and one and, and and there are um, you know, uh, you had asked about metronomes. I don't practice. I well, I do. I do use a metronome first uh, to practice some some things, but. Um, if if having a good time is uh, is one of the things that you need to improve, uh, there's there are, are these um, kind of drum machine uh, mm -hmm. uh, accompaniments that you can get that are that are more interesting than hearing click 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 click. You know, you could get a dr a drum groove, and I've used some. There's one that I really like called the Afro Latin Drum Machine. That's a it's an app. Uh, and it's got all kind. Of, it's all kinds of cool rhythms on it. Uh, and you, it's an app at the, you know, at the app store. Sure. Uh, Afro Latin DM. Uh, and uh, oh, it's fantastic. And 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 so you can instead of listening to click click click, you can have some somebody laying down some kind of a groove on a, on on uh, you know, bongos or djembes or whatnot, and and different and different colors and st and it's sort of it's sort of fun. To, uh, and that will definitely imp improve your time if you have a hard time uh, getting that. But the other, the other, the other thing is to lis listen. Uh, you know, and the and the and the and I think the rule um, that is, uh, you know, we're we play things fast on the banjo because we can, but. Um, uh, and you, but you cannot practice to get to be play fast. Uh, and the, in fact, what you need to practice is precision. And and when when you get precision, then you can take your precision and play and play it more quickly. So so the way to improve timing, if that's an issue, is to go slow. So if. Uh Play like play like that, and 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 think of it as a uh, you know think of it as as like a being almost like a march you know uh, where you're where you're trying to you want to stay perfect, and then uh, and then if if your if your goal is to play it like that, or you you can you know just go way slow, make it, and and the and oftentimes to your question, David, when people are having a hard time uh, delivering those things on time the the issue is often uh, and it's been that way for, for me i you know with things that i'm trying to do that i can't quite do yet i'm trying to play them too fast you know yeah. and what i need to do is i just need to take it and play it slowly and by and what happens is um you play it slowly and then you and 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 you go for perfection you want to play it perfectly so if this is how it's supposed to sound <laughs> Go as slow as you have to go to make that sound perfect, um, mm -hmm. b uh, because then once your hands and you have experienced perfection at that slower speed, you can ask yourself and your hands to, to take that perfection and do it more quickly. But if every time you go to play that, you're stumbling because you're trying to play it too fast. In fact, the, the time that you're spending, you're rehearsing your errors and, and you're not getting anywhere. Uh, easier said than done because it just makes more you know it sort of makes more sense i'll just i'll just keep practicing it it'll happen it it it's 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 frustrating it doesn't quite happen that way and and it sort of goes against human because you think i'll just i'll just do it i'll just i'll stay after this but in fact the time efficient way the it will happen way way faster is you just take those take those articulations as slow as you have to take them to make them perfect and then speed them up yeah yeah um let's see so game back into the the 37 ways to make these yeah chords. yeah um so let, let's see so somebody's the, what's the next step so somebody has their chord shapes memorized up the neck you know and generally they have like four like a full chord shape mm -hmm. and you're showing these little partial ones what would they do 
they just want to make a you know a C chord somewhere on the neck, you know, like at the how could yeah. they cognitively think about it rather than having to memorize the shape? Well, um, one of the one of the issues is that the the most important note in in a major chord is not the root of the chord, but rather the third of the chord. Mm -hmm. So so that uh, in fact, when when we're playing the wanting wanting this song to uh, wanting us a chord to sound like a G chord. The, that's it's the B note that makes it uh, a, a, a true G chord and for the and for the C it's the going up that scale C D E the third of the chord it's the third note in the scale it's an E note so um, <clears throat> when we play when we play this, this uh, C chord down here um, we've got that uh, we've got two E's in it um, and um, so you, you and you know this you know this chord already. Most people would have this one under their fingers. One of the and one of, on the diagram that comes with as a supplement to this workshop, there, there's a bunch of other C chords. Um, and I'm going to say uh, I and I oftentimes use this. I'll lift off. I'll leave the first string open um, when I play C. And I'll put that down some of the time because it's still a C chord because I've got an E note in the bass. This is E on my on the fourth string. So so here's C. I don't need that note up there. I can take it off. And uh, and I can then bring it in as as an accent as an accent note. So that's a that's a that's gives me a, an option and um what i'm after let me fix my headphones here what i'm after are uh options for for when you when you go to c that's so down there at the first you know this chord that you already know another variation on that c chord is uh if you added the second fret of the third string that's that's not a necess that would make it a um if you strum that open, that would be a, a C six nine chord. So it's it's a C chord with a six in it, the A on the third string, and a nine in it, the D on the first string. And so that uh, it's and it's again it's just like options. So you know you're um, we're playing um, th that uh, uh, rolling my ain't going. I ain't gonna work on the railroad. I ain't gonna work on the farm. I'm gonna lay around this shack till the mail train comes back. So there's C time. Time for C. You might just want a regular C, but but you can start to you can start to play around with those sounds, knowing that those are those are options, so that you're still you still have. C there. So there's like, you know, right, right there in, in the first and second fret, you have those choices. Then same way, then the, the next set of C chords are this, uh, are this bar at the, at the fifth fret. And, and there again, you can, uh, you can start to play with this, the sounds around that, around that chord. You can slide into it and and, and play and play and, and, and to experiment with. So how can I uh, now? It's uh, um, uh, let's see. I ain't gonna work on the railroad. Ain't gonna work on the farm. Gonna lay around that shack until the mail train comes back. My sweet baby's on. So when the C chord comes up, I've got I've got that. There's the foundation of it. But then what's what's nearby? How do we know when there's when we're, it's too much? Because um, it, where it's almost sounding like a different chord. Like if you start to make a C six chord, you know it's also an A minor seven right. chord. Right. So um, how do you you know? How do you 
no one, you know, not so it doesn't start sounding like you're playing the wrong chord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it's anarchy. Um, and so uh, uh, you can, uh, if you like it, you get to keep it. And if you don't like, uh, you know, and if you don't like it, you can throw it out. And uh, the, 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 what I like to um, encourage are the options, you know, so that you, uh, and, and then you, you let your ear decide if you, if you like it. And the, you know, we've, we talked, um, uh, in that song accompaniment uh, one about, you know, like the difference between, uh, oh, uh, that, that song, Roll in My Sweet Baby's Arms, and and uh, and uh, uh, John Prine. Uh, I am an old woman named after my mother. My old man's another child. There's all this kind of, uh, you know, that's a little more, ethereal sounding and so some of those some of those uh colors um that come with uh, uh with the the c chord um can can seem appropriate they, they also um uh there's there uh there's the notion in music about um primary notes and passing tones and and so and so the, one of the things that those the sixes and nines can do like in that c chord like because there's that there's c and, and and if this is a that chord doesn't doesn't seem like that chord belongs in roll into my sweet baby's arms you know for a c chord we want we want irregular c however you can uh you can turn some of those notes that you know, um, you know, by knowing that well, it's the sixth or it's the ninth or it's just, it's just nearby, and I like the sound of it. It can be a passing note that that makes it makes that C chord more interesting while while you hold on to the to the um, the character of the song that that seems to fit the best from your opinion. Yeah, and and can you play chords without a third in it? Yeah, yeah, that's what that's what uh, that's what power chords are, and power chords are fantastic. Uh, for rock and roll, <laughs> for rock and roll, and and for and for the and for the banjo. I you know so here's my 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 personal favorite G chord is a power chord, and it's like so I, you know we start with we start with this full up one right, but if you leave the first string and the third string open. Then, then, um, so I've just got my index finger on the third, on the second string, and then I put my ring finger on the fourth string, and I strum that, and and I have the the fifth strings open, the third strings open, the first strings open, and now uh, it's and what happens is because of the open strings, uh, it, the, the the banjo is bigger, it sounds bigger, and it's like this is a that's kind of a tight sound and you hear that you know bluegrass guys do that sort of accompaniment i like i like that rich you know accompaniment that that fits with uh with uh with all kinds all kinds of things and so that's a that's a um you know a power chord a faceless chord sometimes uh, they're called faceless without a without a major or a minor or third in them. Um, you, you get that in like bluegrass guitar playing, like the bluegrass G chord. Yes, exactly. Right. Third, right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And you can do one. So there's the there's the easiest one for G, and you can do this one for D, the, uh, which is um, second string on the on the uh, third fret of the second string and and. Um, second fret of the third string just those that's so you, you get a big fat d sound versus which is really different sounding than yeah put that note and put that f sharp on top that makes it a major chord it make, clarifies it as d but but that you know makes it dark and mysterious uh, love is a rose but you better not pick it only grows when it's on sounds you know it sounds it fits into some of these uh, some of these songs so so that's a that's a that's a that's a cool option that we have especially especially when you're playing alone you know uh, because it makes the instrument sound bigger and 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 that's um sort of that's fun um 
So, so, uh, so I want to get through C and D as well. So then we have all these choices here for C at the, at the first fret. Then, then, um, um, cause we need, uh, in, in, in the key of G, uh, the C chord is here. Um, it's like that same G shape that we played at the third fret is, is G. There is, there is C. And um, so uh, you can sometimes get away with uh, parts of it, not all of it, because knowing that the most important note when we're going to C is going to be the, the E note, the one on the third string at the ninth fret. Um, and, and so, so um, uh, let's see, uh, um, here's a... Um, where I'm um, going down that road, feeling bad. Going down that road, feeling bad. Going down that road, feeling bad. Lord, Lord, I ain't gonna be treated this way. And there, I'm I'm pulling that off with the two fingers. Like it looks like a D7 chord mm -hmm. at the at the eighth and ninth frets, but you're hearing, I'm, I'm, uh, you're hearing enough of it, uh, and I'm hitting it uh, without actually. I don't really want to. I'm trying to avoid the fourth string, and it's okay if the second, if the first string rings a little bit. Um, so we've got that. And, it, and of course, then uh, you can fill it out with, I can start with a. Uh, and, and, but what's, what's nice about the, thinking about the two finger version is you already know this shape. You know, this is, you know, uh, plain old D7 back from Cripple Creek. And so now you jump it up to the eighth and ninth fret and you get a kind of a cool sound in c chord uh you know and it sounds it sounds it'll sound fuller if you uh if you add these other notes and uh, you, you know depending on how long you're on the chord that's that's your choice but again from that constellation idea of like where are the sounds here i'm rolling away on the song it's time to go to um i, I need to play a c chord and i'm just going to do this like I've always done before, or you can think mm, now. I now I now I have this. If I get if I get up to that ninth fret on the third string, there's the there's the beginning of C. And once once you're there with those two fingers, you can add the first string. You can add the fourth string if you want, or uh, or you can slide into it. You can mess with it that way, but it's all. It's all C, and it's you know. So now we've got all of these. We've got this, and we've got we've got that at the at the at the eighth fret. Um, then then um, you know we talked about the slant chord for the for the G. Here's the slant chord that is a C. It's and it's just like taking this part of the C chord from down here. 10, 11, and 12. There's another. There's another C. So uh, now, uh, if I'm, uh, mm, I ain't gonna work on the railroad. I ain't gonna work on the phone. I'm gonna lay around this shack till the mail train comes back. Sweet baby's arm. So, so these, uh, these, these choices for C. You've got four different places. Down here, down at the fifth fret, you've got this, and then you've got the slant version at nine, and then it's all about, you know, putting the groove on onto it with, uh, and what's for those kind of bluegrassy uh, folk songs like those rolling in my sweet baby's arms going down the road 
you know, it sounds nice to have those articulations, like we talked about with the practicing the, you know, let put a hammer on or a slide something on the downbeat. That sounds nice. When I'm going into C, I slide into that, slide into that note. So, um, so there's there's uh, locations for G, locations for C, um, and then and then um, then we've got the D chord. Um, can I jump into D's now, Dave? Yeah, or go we, ahead. Uh, have we got anything else? Okay, so so uh, in G tuning, we're gonna, you know we're looking at D or D seven. Um, and they, uh, you know, sometimes uh, the 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 choice is it can it can be um, a a D major chord is a perfectly fine. You don't have to have D seven. It's a nice option uh, sometimes if you do, and sometimes you can use them both. Uh, so here's the D seven that we started with. Here's that D seven with no third in it that I, men that I, I mentioned before. The, there's the D7, the D chords at the at the seventh fret do, using the bar because you know we've got we can use bar chords because this, of the open tuning. So at the fifth fret it was C, at the seventh fret it's D, and uh, and the upside of that is that the is that the you can leave the fourth string open and it kind of it helps to ground the. It kind of can ground the chord. So here, if we're like playing around with our constellation idea of here's a G chord, and I need to go to D, and just to grab that little bar. Um, it's it's right it's right there. So that's a that's a that's a great option and, and the and and then the you know you might be thinking well what how do you decide which ones to which ones to use and sometimes it's it's nice to uh have uh, oh a you know a, a sound in the lower register and then a sound in the upper register so if i was wanted to stay down low for something for a while I'm here I'm playing this lower version of the chords now that we go to the next verse things are getting livelier so I go to the higher register next verse it gets and I'll go to that to that so 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 one of the criteria might be what's nearby and what in a way to a way to a way to learn it is just, you know take some songs that you already know and just try it you know try out these uh, these uh, different locations so for D we had this D we had that one we've got the seventh fret and then um, and just like uh, the G the G chord shape that we started with at the third at the third fret um, you know, we we discovered here if you get to the eighth fret with your index finger, that's C. So then two frets further, 10, 11, 12, it's D. Uh, but we also know that the first and the fourth strings are D strings, so you can leave them open. So there's a nice sounding. It looks like D7 from at the first and second frets, but it's at 10 and 11 and it's uh it's a perfectly legitimate d chord and so now if i'm playing the like the two chord g to d here's g and i go to this d and it's right it's right there and i already know and it's that it's that uh you know our our favorite friendly shape that's a d and and then uh, what? And one uh, one other last one you can do with D is that the same way that this D seven we played it at the first and second frets. We play when we play it at ten and eleven, it's a D chord, not a D seven. But you can take that same shape 
right there, 13 of 14, and it's D7 again because it's an octave higher than the one we played down there. So now, uh, here's the, my G to D, so, but I'm going to this D7. And you can kind of jump between them. And there's a, so there's all those uh, other options for um, for using the using the D chord, and then um, you, you know you get to 37 uh, <laughs> by, by adding any combination. I think you end up with. Uh, I remember being in a mathematics class, and they taught about permutations. That if you you know you multiply five times four times three times you know, or whatever, and then it comes to some astronomically large number. I did. I did a uh, full disclosure. I just picked 37 because I thought it sounded grandiose. But in fact, uh, we have we have more options than even 37 because you can recombine all of them in ways that you know that are in interesting uh, to you and the and the fit the song that you're trying to play. Yeah, this is this is great. This is gonna definitely you know open up the fingerboard to to a lot of players and give a lot of different options for playing um, a song they already know, you know. Yeah, and check out that, uh, that the, the, uh, the PDF file that comes with it is because it's got a lot of those chords um, written out. So they're not available in books, but available here at, uh, you know, during live uh, <laughs> uh, uh, workshops. Definitely. All right, Michael. Well, thank you, everybody. Thanks for, for tuning in. And um, again, leave your comments in, you know, in the comments section and uh, and let us know if you have any questions or or what what you would like to see in future um, future episodes. All right. All right. Thanks, everybody. See you later. See you. Bye bye.